He's Dr. James Andrews, orthopedic surgeon, and uh, creating a new app, Throw Like a Pro, educating players and coaches on how to prevent elbow and shoulder injuries. We'll get to that coming up in a moment. And uh, the doctor joins us now. Doctor, welcome to the program. How long, if I'm just a normal guy off the street and I wanted an appointment with you, how long would that take? Probably about two days. Oh, oh that's <laughs> we try it. To, we try to keep get people in. Of course, you know, sometimes we get behind, so it varies. Did you ever do surgery on a player for a team that maybe you rooted against growing up? Oh, you know, uh, I'm a big fan of, of – players at, at all different sports at all levels and uh, I don't know if I've ever rooted against any particular player to be honest with you but who did you root for growing up your favorite teams I was you know I was a, a, a born and raised up in North Louisiana so we didn't have professional sports and the, the team that we that we rooted for was the LSU Tigers obviously and that's where I wound up going to college and and pole vaulting but we didn't really know a lot about professional sports and then as I grew up in Georgia in and, and, and the latter years and worked there for 13 years, of course, the Atlanta Braves uh, were my favorite baseball team. I, I look at the list of people you've uh, worked on, cut on. I mean, it's pretty amazing. Um, do you got all the jerseys of everybody that you worked on? Do they give you a jersey after uh, you've performed surgery? Not always, but uh, we've got a number of them, uh, and they're scattered all over the Sports Medicine uh, Institute up in Birmingham as well as down here in Gulf Breeze, Florida. So uh, I walk by and see them and and remember them from 30 years ago, as a matter of fact. So uh, they they bring back a lot of good memories with with some of the successes we've had. Of course, not everything we do has been successful. So I also remember some that we struggled with, obviously. You had Michael Jordan. What would you do with uh, Michael Jordan? Oh, that was when he was playing uh, baseball for the Birmingham Barons. He had a shoulder injury. Jack Nicklaus? He hurt his knee actually playing tennis. <laughs> <laughs> he was a big tennis player in his backyard, as you probably know. And he'd hurt his knee and operated on his knee joint. Emmett Smith? Emmett had both his shoulders separations for his AC joints and operated on his shoulders when he was with the Dallas Cowboys, obviously. Uh, Troy Aikman? Troy had a, a elbow problem, and when I first operated on him, I actually went over to Dallas, uh, and I was at the, covering the Sugar Bowl college game, uh, probably, uh, I think, I forgot what night it was, and flew over to Dallas and operated on him over there at 5 o'clock in the morning, and Wow. And did an AC separation for his shoulder and did an elbow scope for his elbow. And some years later, did another scope on his elbow and took out another loose body to keep him going. He's Dr. James Andrews, the orthopedic surgeon, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. The uh, surgery you're most proud of, which one stands out? Well, you know, I, that, that's like which kid uh, <laughs> do you like the best? Uh, and, of course, the two major things that we do are ACL surgeries, and that's still – uh, a, a tough operation for young athlete to have to go through. We made a lot of strides with with uh, minimally invasive surgery, and the rehab of ACL surgery has gotten so much better that it's become a, a almost an expected return type operation. And then, of course, the one that we're doing so much of now that I'm worried about, obviously, having so many injuries, is the Tommy John's procedure. Okay, and, uh, where did that come from, Doctor, that, that all of a sudden that it, these kids think nothing of saying, oh, I'm going to shut it down and have Tommy John surgery? How do we get to this point? Oh, Lord. Uh, well, I think it begins in youth baseball. If you take even major league pitchers we're seeing today and you really look at their elbow closely and you take a, a prolonged throwing history, you'll find out that most of them had – some minor injury when they were in youth baseball, 13, 14, 15, 16 years of age. And then it finally compounds to a major injury uh, later on in their careers. Now, that doesn't always happen, but that's, that's, that's what I'm seeing. And, of course, the problem in youth baseball is specialization and professionalism, taking kids, treating them like they're professional athletes when they're growing up with, with uh, immature bones and, and, and not real good near muscular control and working them, uh, overworking them like a professional athlete, and then they get overuse 
problems and hurt the shoulder and elbow. And can, that's that's year round baseball. That's the big problem. Can you tell if somebody has used performance enhancing drugs? That oh, I, I, you know, we all worry about that, but I've never been able to detect that. And obviously, uh, uh, Major League Baseball is, has a hard time detecting it too. So uh, I don't know the answer to that. But it, we've t- we've we've seen where pitchers have. Uh, I remember Eric Gagne of the Dodgers. Like you, your arm you can get too big. You know, like your body can't handle what it should be handling normally because of that. Therefore, somebody could blow out their knee or arm, shoulder. So I didn't know if you can see any correlation. If somebody comes in, you can say this is why this happened. Uh, have you ever found yourself looking at a, you know a scenario like that? Well. We we have worried about it, but there's no way to document that. Uh, you know, just the the normal development of our young athletes today. I just operated on a a young kid who's a sophomore in high school. And he's six two, weighs two twenty. He looks like he's twenty five years old, mm. and blew his ligament out in his elbow. These kids are are maturing so fast, but baseball, of course, is a developmental sport, and that ligament gets thicker and thicker as they throw and mature, and the bodies are maturing faster than the ligament mature, so they're all redlining, going beyond the RPM of their of their ligament, and they're tearing it in high school because the ligament hadn't caught up with the development of their bodies. What's the most dangerous sport? <laughs> oh, dangerous? Yeah. Oh, Lord. It looks to me like some of the extreme sports would be the answer to that. <laughs> Did, but do you uh, work on, you know, uh, you got – Snowboarders, skateboarders, those guys who get injured as well. Yeah, but I, I we don't see that that many of those type of athletes down here in Florida. Uh, occasionally, I'll see some of the ones that are involved in 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 wakeboarding and the water sports, and of course a few that are involved in the winter sports. But uh, you know, we're not at a ski resort or where they train, so uh, we see those injuries, and they can be catastrophic, as you well know. But we don't see that many of them. What's the future of sports medicine? The what's, future? Yeah. What's the next big thing? The big, the well, the, the the thing that's been the big revelation over the last forty years, of course, is the arthroscope. We've been trying to figure out what we're going to do next to 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 have a revelation like that. And of course, for me and for a lot of the sports medicine doctors, that revelation is going to be the biologics, and that means uh, stem cell therapy, gene therapy, tissue engineering, uh, and that's hopefully will enable us to to really turn ligament healing on and 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 get a, a a higher level of success with the surgical procedures through biological enhancement. Now that's not a that's not a performance enhancing move. That's a that's a, a, a healing properties move. We can, maybe we can get them to heal quicker. Uh, but that's not like performance enhancing drugs. You've uh, created an app, Throw Like a Pro. Uh, first of all, how, how do people get the app, and, and what do they find on that app? Well, the, that hadn't really come out yet. We just made an announcement about it. Okay. We're still working on it. The first part of that app is going to be on uh, prevention of injuries in, in youth baseball, but then it's going to go into uh, all different levels of tips for first aid treatment for ba- various sports medicine injuries that where parents can look up and, and see what they should do for ordinary ankle sprain, for example. So we got a lot of work to do on the app. Uh, the app will be available over your, your uh, iPhone, just like any other app that you can, that you can go to the app store and you can uh, apply it to your phone, and then you have it on your phone at any time that they might, they might need to call it up. So uh, that, that's that's going to be announced at least the first part of that I think in about a week, and that's going to be all about uh, youth baseball and prevention. Cool. If if Gail Sears tore up his knee today, how long is he out? That's a hard question. Uh, Gail Sears obviously was an elite athlete, and elite athletes can do things that other athletes can't do. And I've always said many times they can make you look real good as a, as a, as a surgeon. <laughs> so somebody like, uh, uh, Gail Sayers, uh, would probably have an accelerated recovery. 
And, uh, you know, he'd still be out a year. Uh, he might get back quicker than that, but that would be a very unusual, unpredictable situation, and it would carry some risk to come back earlier than that. The problem is, is high school kids see an elite athlete come back early, and they have the same injury, and they think they can do the same thing, and they try to come back early, and they get re-hurt because they don't have the natural ability nor the, the adult uh, characteristics for healing and maturity to be able to do that like a professional athlete, nor do they have the intense post-operative rehab training that these professional athletes go through. Well, uh, Adrian, so we have to be real careful about sensationalism with that. Adrian Peterson. Yeah, well, he's an unusual, very unusual individual uh, and, and a great athlete. And plus, you being a surgeon, a surgeon never shake Adrian Peterson's hand. <laughs> he could hurt you. <laughs> yeah. Right? He, he's a very... When you talk to him, though, he's a very mild individual. Uh, but when he turns the, turns the, the lights on on the football field, I, I don't, wouldn't want to be in the one having to tackle him, I promise you. Are your hands insured? Oh, of course not. Oh, they're not. <laughs> well, my voice is. Huh? My voice and my hair are. Really? Yeah. Well, I just take very good care. I, I don't get to do a lot of outdoor adventurous things anymore, nor am I that adventurous to do anything risky. Because your health is the number one thing in your life. And, and what I do in medicine and surgery, of course, longevity is so important. So uh, I have to be very careful about uh, I quit skiing 10 years ago because I didn't want to come home with a fractured leg or something like that. So, you know, I, 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 I play it safe pretty much <laughs> in my age group. Before I let you go, how do we know RG3 is all the way back? Well, you know, last year uh, – we shut the offense down. In fact, they call it the Andrews offense because they they <laughs> they didn't they couldn't really do much with him because we just said, "Hey, it's too risky." Uh, and then they 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 shut him down the last few ball games. Uh, but RG three, as he accepted that, told me he said my knee has not been a factor even last year. Uh, but that's RG three saying that. My goal last year was to get him through that first season. Because I knew if we got him through the first season without having any re-injury, and, and you got to realize the procedure we did on him was a redo, uh, which is you have to be more careful with a redo than you do a primary procedure. So this season, uh, he's doing everything already. So we're, we're hoping for a uh, for a, a a a real RG3 this next next season. Well, Doctor, hopefully I'll never see you. Uh, well, I mean, if I see you socially, it'd be great, but not to, you know, be on a, uh, you know, a gurney there, a slab there as you're working on me. But uh, we do appreciate you uh, joining us and uh, kind of taking us behind the curtain there. Yep, absolutely. All right. Thank you, Doctor. That's uh, Dr. James Andrews, the orthopedic surgeon. And uh, throw like a pro app.